Welcome back to DIY My Way and the third and final part of my backhoe thumb hydraulification. If you haven't watched parts one and two, I highly recommend you watch those first because otherwise jumping in the middle of the last segment, not going to make a lot of sense. In this final installment, I'm going to make the modifications to the thumb itself and also remount the cylinder, then connect the short hoses, do an initial testing of the system, and then do the full electrical work. After that, some field testing. After I posted part two, I got some comments suggesting that I might want to reconsider how I plumbed up the backhoe. So I'm going to take a few minutes to explain that. So cue up the PowerPoint. In part two, I covered various ways that you could control a hydraulic thumb. This is the typical way with the third function valve upstream from the backhoe and the three point. Instead of a grapple, it could be used to control a thumb. I chose to put it downstream of the backhoe and ahead of the three point because it was easier to plumb up that way. But a kind fellow named Tom Zipansky pointed out that the backhoe valve bank uses the power beyond circuit to dump the pressure relief valves. The third function valve blocks this circuit any time it is activated. So if I was moving the thumb and moving any of the backhoe cylinders, I'm risking damaging the backhoe, valve bank, and cylinders. He suggested I plumb the third function valve upstream of the backhoe valves. I quickly realized he was right. The second suggestion he made, which another viewer also suggested, was that I install a crossover relief valve. Ordinarily, a cylinder connects directly to the valve controlling it. But when you have cylinders opposing each other, such as with a bucket and thumb cylinder, there's a danger that the bucket cylinder, which typically has a mechanical advantage over the thumb cylinder, could cause overload of the thumb cylinder valve or hose pressure limits. A crossover relief valve will solve this problem. Under normal pressures, hydraulic fluid flows across the relief valve normally. But when the pressure limit is reached on either side of the cylinder, the relief valve allows the fluid to escape to the other side of the cylinder and go back to the tank. The pressure setting is adjusted to match the specific application, avoiding chaos, death, and destruction. Crossover relief valves cost from between $90 and $120. This protection seems well worth the cost and effort to install. I used a rotary grinder with a wire brush wheel to remove the paint from the areas to be welded. Then using a three quarter inch transfer punch as an alignment tool, I tack weld the first bushing. I had these made at a local machine shop, which they did for free, since I had helped them with IT issues in the past. Then I tack welded the gussets in place. I made them from 3 8 inch mild steel plate. After finishing the first side, I flipped it upside down and used a 3 quarter inch thumb bolt to align the two spacers before tack welding the other spacer and gussets in place. The bolt is still moving easily. That's a good sign. Next, I tack weld the gusset. Then I took the thumb over to my friend Bob, who built my shop. He finished the welding with his 400 amp MIG welder. As much as I'd like to have used my little 125 amp flux core welder, I knew it wasn't powerful enough to solidly weld half inch thick material. Back at my shop, I cleaned up the weld areas, primed them, then painted them with a couple of coats of Kubota orange.
Once the paint was dry, I reinstalled the thumb on the backhoe. Then reattached the cylinder with the half-inch bushings on either side of the cylinder tang. Connected the cylinder to the thumb. And put the bucket back on. I connected the short hydraulic hoses, starting with the 3-foot one, routing it under the dipper stick cylinder pivot pin. I zip-tied the hose protector to the hose. Fed the hose under the bucket cylinder pivot pin. Then I connected the hose to the bulkhead fitting, hand tight. Pay attention to what doesn't happen here, because it will have consequences later. Another zip tie on the hose protector. I screwed on a 3 8 inch ORB to 3 8 inch JIC elbow fitting to the cylinder. Oriented the elbow, then tightened the jam nut to seal the O-ring. I connected the hose to the fitting and tightened the JIC to one and a quarter to one and a half nut faces. I repeat for the forefoot hose. Here's a look at the final product. Looks like it's going to work out great. Before I install the electrical controls permanently, I want to hook them up temporarily to make sure everything works. It'll be my first test of the cylinder. And I'm going to use this battery charger as a quick and dirty 12 volt power supply. These two connectors go to either solenoid. Now for the purposes of the testing, it doesn't matter which goes to which, because I can always swap them to decide which buttons on the uh, controller joystick will do what. So let's see if I can reach this from here. Uh, just might be able to. So next, I connect the joystick to this connector. And then power to the red and black. If you hear a background hum, that is the sound of the battery charger. What I'm hoping to hear is a healthy click from both solenoids when I push either button. I don't know if you can hear it, but I hear one of them. I hear two good clicks. So we're ready to fire up the tractor and see if this will work. Wish me luck. Oh, look at that. Got to purge the air out of it first. Ooh. Take a few passes to get it working smoothly. Oh, I've got a leak. Damn. Where's that coming from? I have a leak. Folks, remember to tighten your connectors. Remember that I told you to pay attention to what didn't happen. Well, what didn't happen was fully tightening the three-foot hose to the bulkhead fitting. I'll just put these on hand tight here. All right, let's give this another go now that I've got the fittings all tightened up. Nice and smooth. Looks like I've got all the air out of the system. And another thing that it's doing that I wanted was it's moving 
at a, at a slightly faster rate than just the bucket, but I can live with that. Since I've introduced quite a few feet of hose and the volume of the cylinder, I want to check my hydraulic fluid level to see if I need to top it off or if it's still in a good range. You're not going to be able to see this, but it hasn't budged. So apparently not enough for it to show up on the gauge. So that's good. Before I wire everything up, one of the first decisions I have to make is how I want to orient this joystick knob with the buttons. Because you got several choices. I could orient it like this with the buttons toward me and use the thumbs, which I'm kind of leaning toward. It could also be toward the side and then also thumb accessible. Or the buttons could face the front, front and I could use my two fingers here to operate it. And, I, and it may take some experimenting because I'm not sure which way I want to go. Uh, I may just have to try it in the field and decide what I like. But it's easy enough to both switch the orientation of the knob as well as which button does what. And you'll see that in the video. The joystick has what looks to be about three feet of wire here to a connector that connects with another section of the harness that will go underneath and the power wire here. So what I have to do is figure out my routing from up here, down through here, and down into the cavity below. Part of my challenge will be securing the wire along the way where it keeps out of the way of these moving parts here. All these linkages and stuff. Don't want the wire to get tangled up with any of that. We'll start by taking off this knob and doing a test fit of the joystick knob here with the buttons and figure out how to get the wire down through this boot in a fairly clean way. Oh, and that thing is on there. Might be molded on there. Just stuck on there, no threads or anything. Okay. The joystick has a pretty accommodating design uh, with uh, this cl side clamp here and these various size sleeves, which you can take off to adapt to different uh, shaft sizes or lever sizes that you're trying to fit it to. So we can loosen these up and just by, just my guess is, see, I'll pull some of these out. I think I can get there for that. That's it, right there. That's the ticket. <laughs> it sits up a lot higher than the other one. I'll be able to tell the sticks apart, no problem there. I removed the rubber boot to see if I can get the cable connector through the hole in the top. Nope, not without a modification. With a utility knife. I decided to go ahead and cut the lever shorter to accommodate the new joystick knob. First, I measure down two and a half inches. Then use an angle grinder with a cutoff disc to make the cut. Then bevel the cut with the grinding disc. Next, I strap the excess joystick cable to the flat bar control rod of one of those stabilizer valves, which seems to be the best way to keep the wire from possibly getting caught up in the linkages. Then I routed the power cable toward the left side of the control box and fed it down through a hole into the undercarriage of the backhoe. I routed the solenoid cable up through a hole from the undercarriage into the control box and connected it to the joystick cable. Here's a better look at the wire routing. Notice that I use a zip tie to make sure the power cable stays out of trouble. So I have the wires routed through. The solenoid control cable uh, follows back through where one of my boom hoses go. And the power cable follows the 
pump hose, which is this right here, which connects up to the pump side of the tractor. And you'll see why I'm doing that here in a minute. Now I have to figure out how to safely tie up the slack here and plug this up into the back of the solenoid because I need to keep all these wires out of the way of the moving hoses and particularly these two cylinders down here that sway back and forth a bit. By the way, I marked the connectors right and left so that I can keep track as to which one goes to the solenoid. Now they may have to be swapped depending on how I want the buttons to work on the joystick, but this is just the designation so I can reverse it if I need to and keep track of it. To keep the power cable protected the full length of the run, I needed to replace the short section of protective hose sleeve with a 42 inch piece. First I have to remove the quick connect coupler and plastic cap. Then feed the protective sleeve over the hose and power cable. Now I can reattach the quick connect coupler and plastic cap using some fresh Teflon tape on the NPT threads. Yes, you can use Teflon tape on hydraulic connections so long as you keep it a few threads away from the end. It's used in the factory all the time, like with this connector. Time to splice the standard automotive SAE connector onto the end of the power cable. I cut and stripped the wires. Then crimped on barrel connectors. Slid on heat shrink tubing. I crimped the electrical connector to the power cable and shrunk the heat shrink tubing with a heat gun. A big zip tie polishes it up. Let's test this wiring. See if I got it right. Nothing sparks yet, that's a good sign. If I can keep these two leads apart, that would also be helpful. I'll go push the joystick buttons. Yep, there's my click. Both of them. Awesome. On the tractor end of things, I want to put one of these standard automotive SAE connectors just above the hydraulic connection right here. So I need to make a little plate for that to attach to that will attach right here. I made use of an existing hole to attach the plate. I made a reference line with a Sharpie. After a little fabrication, I test fitted the plate and marked the bolt hole. And here's the final version with the hole drilled and tapped for an M8 bolt which I had on hand. The electrical connector is held on with four small screws, split washers, and nuts. I tighten the bolt and split washer. That worked out nicely. Next, I connected a length of 14 gauge two conductor power wire in quarter inch wire loom to my auxiliary fuse box, shared by the 10 amp fuse that my voltmeter USB charger add-on uses. Since the third function valve kit includes an inline 10 amp fuse, I decided just to make use of this one instead. I've already attached the negative wire with a crimp on eyelet to the ground post. I zip tied the cable and wire loom to the existing runs, then routed it towards the power outlet.
one more zip tie, then cut off the excess. The connections to the power outlet are barrel connectors under heat shrink tubing and a short length of 3 8 inch wire loom. Electrical tape joins the quarter inch and 3 8 inch wire loom pieces and two zip ties keep the cable secured. All right, I've completed the wiring on the backhoe and on the tractor, so it's time to marry the two back up, do some initial testing in the shop for range of motion, make sure there are no hoses being pinched or pulled in ways that I don't like, and then we'll take it out in the field and give it a real test. All right, I wanted to bring you in here close so you can see how all this hooks up. There's the port that goes back to tank, and here's my hose that goes to the pump and the electrical hookup. And it's important when laying this out, I didn't mention it earlier, but uh, you have to think all this through, that where this, uh, this quick connect here, you need to make sure you have clearance between it and the PTO and PTO shield, which I do. And there's also room for this hose to uh, this hose, which connects there to be in the right position and have somewhere to go. As you'll see, it all works out pretty good. So let's get this thing hooked up. Interrupt the power beyond loop that plugs into here in case you can't see that because of that hose that goes there what I typically do is I connect these covers together to keep them from uh, getting dirty so when they're like that and then this one will go here likewise connect the caps together Keep some clean. And then lastly, and, and a new step for me, is hooking up the power. There we go. Oh, sweet. That is interesting. That's pushing the boom down. When the thumb cylinder goes to either extreme, the boom drops a bit. I think this is because the thumb cylinder has no relief valve. So when the thumb hits the limit of travel, it creates a high pressure surge all the way back up the line and forcing the tractor's master relief valve to unload. That surge goes all the way through the other backhoe spool valves. Since the boom cylinder already leaks down pretty quickly, I think the surge causes the boom to drop a bit each time the limit is reached. Plumbing the third function valve ahead of the backhoe valve should fix that, but also I think the crossover relief valve would help as well because then the bum would effectively have a relief valve. Next I swung the boom to both sides to see if there were any issues with the boom hoses. There was plenty of slack, but I wanted to make sure they didn't exceed their minimum bend radius of 2.6 inches. It looked like the hoses could benefit from a couple of zip ties to hold them down closer to the rest of the hoses. One of the last steps I was going to do was strap these hoses down a little bit so that they stay, keep a lower profile. That was the zip tie making that noise, I swear. I slowly swing the boom and look for any hose issues. Looks pretty good. If I push the hoses down a little farther and then zip tie them, they'll have a bigger bend radius, which is good. All right, I'm gonna take it out for some very careful field tests, see how it performs. Seems like greasing the pivot pins might be a good idea before I start testing.
and maybe I should replace that broken bucket tooth while I'm at it. That new tooth sticks out like a sore thumb. I begin the testing by playing with rocks. There, got it. Now what do I do with it? Guess I better put it back where I got it from. Hydraulic thumb is so sweet. No more having to get off the tractor to set the thumb. Let's move on to playing with logs. Got me one. Ah, a three for one. I think I can declare the field test a success. At least I'm going to, anyway. Well, overall, I'm pleased with version 1.0 of my hydraulic thumb. But there's clearly room for improvement. Uh, the fact that when I uh, bottom out the thumb, either either direction, when it hits its max, that the boom goes down a little bit. That back pressure that forces the boom is my leakiest cylinder. And so this thing without this lock will leak down fairly quickly. Uh, that's telling me it's doing not a good thing to back that pressure up and force the boom down a little bit. And so that proves the point that uh, Tom Zapansky made about having the third function valve behind the stack of valves here. Seemed like the thing to do. In fact, it does tell me that if had I put it in the front of it, uh, it probably would have meant that everything else would stop while I was working the thumb. That's probably not a bad idea. Also, I'm a little concerned about the two hoses here that route either side because they spread wide like they do right now to go in on either side. Uh, it looks like I'm coming close to the minimum radius that, the, that this particular hose is supposed to be able to bend. Um, so I think I can uh, move them down and push them a little closer together to take to relieve some of that. So that's the change I'll make. Uh, also, the crossover relief valve, which uh, both Tom and uh, an another uh, person who commented on the video said 
We'll do two things besides uh, allowing, protecting the cylinder from being crushed by the bucket. If the bucket overpowers it, it will act as a relief valve for the uh, third function valve all the same. So when it maxes out, it'll bleed past itself. So that sounds like an intriguing, so I'll actually have a relief valve to help protect the cylinder beyond just the uh, master relief valve on the hydraulic system. So stay tuned for an update video that may, won't be the next video. I probably have a couple more in the wings that I'll do. It'll take me a little time to do my research, get my pieces and uh, replumb But there will be a follow up on this. So, uh, and hopefully it'll have the, the version 2.0, we'll get it right. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please click that like button, leave a comment, and by all means, please subscribe. If you wanna know when I post new videos, click that little bell. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.